I am very pleased to be able to address primarily, especially all those who are attentive to the development of the latest events in the Middle East. This past Saturday, we all woke up, mainly on the American continent, with the terrible news of this invasion by the terrorist group Hamas, which by the way the word Hamas in Hebrew means the violent ones. More than a thousand terrorists from the Hamas group entered, I repeat, into the land of Israel, mainly along the Gaza border with Israel, not on the Mediterranean side. And they began to kill people for approximately the entire day. They entered the kibbutz. They entered all the offices of the people who worked there. They took the women out. They raped women. They opened women with knives. In short, it was a real carnage. And besides, they took a lot of people. The exact number of people kidnapped to Gaza is still unknown. This took the Israeli government, the Mossad, which is Israel's secret service, and all of Israel's military intelligence, by surprise. This purpose, that the Hamas group has just had, at first, it can be deduced, that it is for the purpose of exchanging prisoners, because it was precisely what they did in the first place, kidnapping and bringing people to Gaza, Jews, for a possible exchange in the next weeks, months, or years. This conflict began in 1948, when Israel regained its independence, after almost 2,000 years of exile, to all nations, immediately. On May 15th, that is, one day after they return to Israel, they are attacked by Arab nations. This attack is repeated in 1956. 1965, the famous Six-Day War of June, 1965 where Israel recovers the city of Jerusalem for the first time. In the history of almost 2,000 years, they had almost advanced in this six-day war to the Sinai Peninsula and furthermore to the Golan Hills. The Golan Hills is exactly the border they have with Syria, which was in the control of the Syrians. When Israel took these strategic positions, they also took the Gaza Strip where the Palestinians are currently located, and the Eastern Bank or West Bank, where the ancient city of Jericho is located. Once they did this, the United Nations immediately demanded that they withdraw from Egypt. After a few weeks of negotiation, they abandoned the Sinai Peninsula. They had to hand over half of the city of Jerusalem. They kept the eastern part, but refused to hand over the Golan Hills. Why? Because the Golan Hills is currently Israel's most strategic point to protect itself, especially from the Syrians, because it is exactly north of Israel, north of the Sea of Galilee, and I repeat, it is the border with Syria. Time passed and they were attacked again in 1973, in the famous Yom Kippur War, from Yom Kippur, until yesterday, which is the month of October 2023, 50 years have passed without Israel entering into war. I mean, in the last 50 years they have attacked them. They have sent missiles. But now the Prime Minister Netanyahu has just declared that we are at war, which has never happened in the last 50 years. Why did the Prime Minister just declare this? because he knows perfectly well that the Hamas terrorist group and the Hezbollah terrorist group that is north of Israel and Lebanon are financed by the nation of Iran. So Iran, we could say, finance this invasion. And they are also truly expecting a counterattack from the Hezbollah terrorist group of Lebanon. Now very well. 
This is also very interesting because a few weeks ago, we see behind of all this because it is incredible. The hundreds of speculations, hypotheses and things that have been spread with very serious misinformation. Because they do not know the background through the sacred scriptures. Thank God that God has given us the Bible so that we can interpret the events that happen around us from a much higher perspective, which is the spiritual dimension that we can only find in the Bible. So, a few weeks ago, the United States tried to promote, to negotiate, that Saudi Arabia negotiated with Israel. It was called the Arab Peace Initiative. In this peace initiative, Saudi Arabia had previously stated that they would never enter into negotiations with Israel until Israel recognized two states within the land or geographical terrain where Israel currently is located. Since then, Prime Minister Netanyahu who truly descends from his father in 1948, was one of the founders of the state. Netanyahu's brother Jonathan was the first to die when they went to rescue more than 200 Jews. In Entebbe, Africa, he is a soldier, and he knows perfectly well that as long as Iran continues to threaten to completely wipe Israel off the map, as do the Palestinians, he has to use force. For this, it is also interesting to remember that in approximately 1973, the liberation movement for Palestine was formed by Yasser Arafat, who was considered the greatest terrorist of the 20th century. Arafat left a written constitution where he clearly declared that they would never accept a partial treaty from Israel, that is, that the day Israel wanted to deal with the Palestinians, they had to hand over the eastern side of Jerusalem. So we are facing a conflict where we see that the powers and superpowers of the world, such as Russia, China, the United States, North Korea, are waiting for opportunities to enter into a war and try to control the Middle East. And it is interesting that the Middle East is currently becoming the center of global attention in the headlines of all newspapers, just as the Bible prophesied over 2,600 years ago. So, this is not going to happen because right now, well, the decision of the Israeli government so far, we are one day after the invasion. They are trying to enter the Gaza Strip. They are going to enter house by house. Netanyahu has promised that they are going to remove all the terrorists. They are removing the entire civilian population to shelter them within Israel, to give them a place within the nation of Israel and to be able to remove this terrorist group. Because in the end, the Palestinian people are not guilty. We have to pray for the Palestinian people because they are not guilty of the murderous and cruel government they have, headed by Mahmoud Abbas, who is the president, and the Hamas terrorist group. We now know that we are going to begin to see a subsequent war because biblically Israel is not going to allow Iran to have the nuclear bomb and bomb them first. Netanyahu perhaps after this will try to attack Iran. Biblically, you will find this also very clearly specified and after this, this war will take place. Perhaps the one prophesied in Psalm 83 where the first circle of Israel which are the nations, the five Arab nations, are going to be defeated according to this prophecy, and once they are defeated, the second wave of attack against Israel, who will they be? We find it in Ezekiel chapter 38, which is the alliance that is already being formed through Vladimir Putin, where Russia is going to lead the second wave of attack against Israel with the nations of Russia with, of course, him as the leader, Iran, Turkey, the North African nations that are going to try to take over Israel, because it is also in Russia's interest 
that Israel is not in the Middle East to control the oil. It is logical that the alliance of chapter 38 of Ezekiel does not include the Arab nations as is possible. That in this chapter, 38 of Ezekiel, written 2700 years ago, we see pure Muslim nations trying to invade Israel because the Arabs were previously defeated. So this next war that may take place, once again, like the Six-Day War of 1967, it will be Israel that will win again. But this will not end until the second coming of Jesus Christ. The Bible says clearly, in the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 2 and 3, this was written 2,600 years ago. Behold, I am about to make Jerusalem a cup of staggering to all the surrounding peoples. The siege of Jerusalem will also be against Judah. On that day, I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples, all who lift it, will surely hurt themselves. And all the nations of the earth will gather against it. So, ladies and gentlemen, and all of you who are paying attention to what is happening, our days are numbered. History is rushing and accelerating with unusual rapidity and biblical prophecies that belong to the end times are being fulfilled before our eyes. Right now, the only thing we know is that Jerusalem will become the bone of contention and Jerusalem will be the fuse, according to Revelation chapter 16, where the Third World War called Armageddon will be fought. So it is absolutely necessary that we pay attention today like never before to the sacred scriptures. The world is completely disjointed. The rulers are crazy, all trying to have more and more land, more domain, more control. But right now, the center of control is the Middle East, because 65% of the oil reserves of the world are located there. Also interesting is that when Jesus Christ returns the second time, he will set his feet on the Mount of Olives. So biblically, Israel is indestructible. The Word of God says it clearly in the book of Isaiah. And it says here in Isaiah that God will continue protecting, guarding Israel from all dangers. And it says this in chapter 31 of the book of Isaiah, verse 5. Like the birds that fly thus will protect Jehovah, the armies of Jerusalem, protecting, delivering, preserving, and saving. We are sure God loves the Palestinians, God loves the Arabs. God loves everyone because God so loved the world that he gave us his son, Jesus Christ, so that whoever believes in him will not be lost, but have eternal life. The problem is that human beings live in a state of rebellion against their Creator because they have not wanted to believe in the sacrifice that 2,000 years ago the Son of God was crucified, buried and resurrected three days later so that you and I would have the peace we need and the clarity in our thoughts to know how to live in this last stage of human history. God bless you.